Welcome to the Eliza OS developer YouTube channel. This is the second video in our foundational series called Your First Agent. Now, today we are gonna get our first agent up and running. If you didn't watch the first video, that was about CLI and monorepo usage patterns. Very important to understand these, not super complicated, but very important to understand. If you type this and you're not seeing that, then head over to eliza.how and follow the installation and quick start, get your CLI installed, and yeah, we can start. So as I explained in the first video, if you're trying to create your own project, your own agent, your own plugin, something like that, the CLI is gonna be the way to go. You don't need to install the whole mono repo. And if we wanna create a project or a plugin or an agent, looks like the create command is the way to go. So let's run this command with a help flag and see how it works. Okay. Create a new Eliza OS project, plugin, agent, or T. It takes a name of the project or whatever, plugin, agent, as the argument. You can skip with the flag yes or a type you can specify as a flag. So that sounds good. Um, I like using types, so I will say that it's a project and I will call it that. We offer two very easy database choices. This is for local and this is for Postgres. Both are very easy. I'm gonna use local. If you wanna use Postgres, you can use something like Neon and very easily get a free hosted database that you can use. And we offer several model choices here. I'm gonna select OpenAI just for this demo. So I'm gonna show you what the project structure looks like and I'm gonna point your eyes to the most important stuff first basically so the SRC is very important because it contains the index and the character file and the plugin file these are super important um, basically the character file is probably the most important file then we have the ENV and this is actually gonna show our ENV files that we created while we were setting up our project. So here's my OpenAI key, here's my location of the data directory. Oh, cool. So as I can see, my database is actually right here in this .eliza folder inside of my project. That's cool. A uh, bunch of node modules in here, disks, scripts. We don't really need to worry about that stuff right now. What's most important is this character file, this env, also this env.example. This is gonna show us the keys to the key value pairs of any of the plugins that we might wanna use. So this is really helpful helper text. For example, if we wanted to use the Twitter plugin, we know that we would have to copy all of these over and paste them in and add the values, right? And yeah, so let's get down to it. I want to show you guys the default character, which is, of course, Eliza. So we can see here that there's some conditional logic to import some plugins. And then we have our system prompt, a bio, topics, message examples, style. And yeah, basically all of these just define the character. So when I think about Eliza, I think about agents, which have a personality, right? So they have like goals and bio and lore and things that they want to happen and style. So they kind of have a personality and then they're equipped with plugins. And those are really the two super important things that an agent has. It has a personality and it has plugins and the plugins basically allow agents to do stuff, to interact with the world. Um, so yeah, right now we're just gonna run Eliza as she is, and I'm gonna run as a dev server. So we can see here that there's two options. There's a dev server or a start command. So both of these, they're very similar. They're basically identical, but dev server when you're 
testing your agents you're going to want to use more because it's actually going to hot reload um, when you're actually running a development server you're going to want to use start but we can see here that we're going to get a lot more verbose logs with the dev command um, and also we're going to get hot reloading so if i were to change things in here then those would be updated in real time now first let's go to localhost and let's see so we're actually running Eliza, what's up? and the eliza server is running eliza's responding as normal now what if we went in here and we asked the ide to change this character file to a character named Limbo, who is very strange and wacky and respect the whole character file structure just Yeah, basically we've changed the name okay it's making like a wizard with rubber ducks okay it's obsessed with rubber ducks basically so yeah so I just changed that file now I would expect the server to have responded because we're running dev so see here we already see some stuff that shows it's changed um, if we were running start, we would have to stop the server and start it again. So, yeah, here's Jimbo, and we can see here our system prompt is updated. And Jimbo is going. If we want to change the picture, we can. And yeah, now we have a kind of wacky character that's saying weird stuff. So just in a couple minutes, we were able to get this character, very unique personality, much different than Eliza's. It's very easy to just prompt cursor and play with this. So that's it for the video today. In the next video, video three, we're going to talk about adding multiple characters, and we're also going to talk about adding and removing plugins, which is super important. Thanks, guys.